In this video, we're going to look at left bundle branch block. And specifically, we're going to look at how uh, our charge or the flow of charge is altered in left bundle branch block in order to create a wide complex negatively deflected uh, QRS segment when we're looking at V1 uh, as a diagnostic criteria for left bundle branch block. In order, to, in order to understand that, then we're first going to look at our normal QRS complex uh, in V1 to get an appreciation for what is actually happening when I have a depolarization and what that means from the perspective of positive current or the flow of positive current. So normally we have what we have pictured here, P wave followed by a positive deflection at our QRS and V1 and then a negative deflection from baseline in our QRS followed by a T wave. What's important is that uh, this QRS segment is going to be less than 120 milliseconds which indicates there is no block occurring here. So what we're looking at truly when we're looking at V1 and these positive negative deflections is the flow or the net, uh, the flow of net positive current down our uh, heart. So we know that our current flow is going to start at the SA node, travel to the AV node, and then make its way down to the bundle of his. Following this, we start to see septal depolarization, and this is one of the reasons why we start to see a positive deflection in our QRS complex as the impulse travels down the septum. So the impulse will move through the bundle of his and start to depolarize the bundle branches in the septum, and that flow of current occurs from left to right. So as current flows down the bundle branches, we see the positive net charge take a left to right direction. So what we're seeing is uh, essentially positive flow towards V1. So when we're looking at what does V1C, well, V1 sees a net positive charge flowing towards the lead because we have depolarization down the septum occurring from left to right. So that's going to position it so that this positive flow of ions or this positive flow of ions is going to be positioned towards V1, which will give a positive deflection. So that's what we're seeing here. So again, this is the septum is being depolarized, uh, resulting in this uh, net positive flow towards V1. So we're looking at septal depolarization. And again, septal depolarization is occurring left to right, which is why we see that positive deflection. What's going to happen next is we're going to see the current split between the bundle branches and move left to right. The left ventricle is thicker, has more muscle, and as a result, will typically have a larger appearance of uh, flow. So because it's larger, we have larger current flow, or uh, when we look at how positive the flow is, we see more positive flow based on the higher amount of myocytes and tissue pre uh, present here. So bigger left ventricle means a bigger gradient of flow that's occurring away from the camera. When it's coming down the right side of the heart, we have less tissue, and leads to a smaller gradient of flow, which will occur towards um, V1 or towards our lead. So when we average this, what we typically see is again a negative deflection on our QRS as we see ventricular depolarization, or uh, we're making its way down from the septum deep down into the uh, ventricular tissue. What's happening is we get that negative deflection because um, the flow or the depolarization happening in the left ventricle is occurring um, at a higher rate or a higher net positive rate because of the thick tissue. So we see uh, that's going to overwhelm the appearance of the ion flow towards the camera. So as a result, uh, it will appear to have a negative deflection. So again, this negative deflection is the result of increased tissue mass in the left ventricle, which is going to make the net positive flow away from the camera more apparent in the left ventricle than it is um, in the, uh, compared to the net positive flow of current towards the right ventricle. So tissue mass in the left ventricle, the net positive flow of current away from our lead more apparent. So as a result, we see that negative deflection. So we know when we have a left bundle branch block, what is happening is the left bundle branch block is not accepting uh, current. So we have something that's blocking current flow through the left bundle branch that is going to result in uh, slower current uh, traveling through that left bundle. We know when we look at V1 with a left bundle branch block, typically what we're seeing is a wide complex QRS that is negatively deflected. So that it means it's going to be greater than 120 milliseconds. And in general, we'll see a negative deflection. So what we'll be seeing is a much more negative deflection than positive deflection. So we'll take a look at what's actually happening in left bundle branch block. So here we'll draw the block in. 
which means that uh, current is not going to want to be accepted by that left bundle branch and is going to lead an alteration and depolarization. So we'll see a very similar process happening from the SA node to the AV node, followed by a conduction to the bundle of his. What differs here is that as we make it to the septum, that left bundle is not going to want to depolarize, so current is not going to preferentially be able to depolarize that left bundle well, resulting in a change in the net flow of positive charge. The right bundle will become the more dominant and will be seeing a flow of charge from right to left rather than from left to right. So the flow through the septum is now changed because that left bundle uh, was unable to conduct electricity or conduct current flow as well as it was before. So the right bundle branch becomes more dominant. The other thing that's going to happen here is the depolarization of the lower parts of the left bundle that are moving their way up into the ventricle are going to require stimulation by the right bundle branch. So rather than current flowing down through the left bundle branch and then up uh, through it as it typically would, what happens is current comes down, starts to activate the right side of the heart, and this activation will then lead to subsequent activation of the left bundle branches. So what's gonna happen here is we start to see movement down the uh, right bundle branch and the Purkinje fibers, and then uh, progressively moving over towards the left side of the heart. We start to see a very early flow of current towards V1 as the right side of the heart depolarizes, and then late depolarization of the left side of the heart as it eventually becomes activated by the right side because it wasn't able to accept flow down the bundle branch. So what we see as a result is the characteristic look of our left bundle branch block, which can be one of two things. We can see this widespread negative uh, deflection. And what's happening in this case is think about our movement of ions through the septum, our movement of charge through the septum. It is away from V1, which will create a negative deflection. We see only a very brief flow of current towards V1 through the right side of the heart. And, but because of this delay towards depolarization on the left side of the heart, we will see a, a long, slow depolarization of the left side of the heart. So as a result, we get this big, wide negative deflection. So we may not even see um, the right side as the left side is taking its time uh, having its uh, big depolarization. So it becomes wide like this. We get this wide complex QRS. The other thing that you may see is it may make uh, look a little bit more like a W. So we see septal depolarization, which we know in this case is moving away from the left bundle. So what we may see is uh, something looks more like a W as well. So this is where we get this big negative deflection as the septum is actually depolarizing from right to left. You see very brief right ventricular depolarization followed by left ventricular depolarization and then our T wave. We can actually have this kind of W pattern in someone who's having a left bundle branch block. So again, in this case, we would see septal depolarization, which is now moving right to left, followed by right ventricular depolarization, followed by left ventricular depolarization, uh, which is prolonging. it. So um, what can happen in some cases is this uh, positive deflection can become hidden because this is such a large flow of ions uh, that may be happening simultaneously. So we could instead see it look more V-like rather than W-like. So again, just to be clear, what we're seeing here is the uh, reversal and flow through the septum. So because we have a left bundle branch block, we're seeing a reverse flow through the septum. So instead of depolarizing from left to right, in this case is depolarizing from right to left, which would be a flow uh, away from V1, which will create a negative deflection. What we will then see, is, or then may see, is what's happening in green here, is we're watching uh, our small, depolarization of the right ventricle, which flows towards V1. It can cause this positive deflection. And then finally, in pink, what we're seeing is slow, slow delayed depolarization of the left ventricle, which is characterized by current flow away or positive current flow away from V1, which is going to create this big uh, negative deflection here as well. And then we move towards repolarization. So in a left bundle branch block, we're looking at a a duration of the QRS complex greater than 120 milliseconds. This is because now, uh, in this case, the left ventricle is relying on uh, the right bundle branch and the depolarization of the right ventricle to lead to depolarization of the left. This is, be again, because current cannot flow past this bundle branch. And the negative deflection is the result of a reversal in septal flow. So we're watching septal flow from right to left rather than from left to right. And because we see a delay, 
in depolarization of the big left ventricle. Uh, that's primarily what we're seeing on the QRS. So we see slow but large depolarization of our big left ventricle, which leads to a large uh, negative deflection. So we can see this W shape or just this V shape in V1. And we've been looking at that at, at, that at both uh, V1 and V2, but V1 is going to give us the best look.